Everything is so expensive these days, but I just made these 10 meals plus some snacks for right around $28. That came out to be about $2.50 per meal. If you're a college student, a young professional, or somebody who's just trying to save a bit of money, meal prep can be an answer for you. Spending $10 to $15 a day for lunch at Chick-fil-A or Chipotle is going to add up. Here's five breakfasts, five lunches, and some snacks to help you get through the work or school week. For breakfast, we've got the sweet potato and ham egg bake. For lunch, chicken bowls with rice and lentils. And for the snack, some homemade hummus and carrots. Let's talk a little pricing. If you didn't have a single ingredient in your house and you had to buy every one for these three recipes, it would cost you about $60.10 here in Austin, Texas. Where you live is obviously going to impact how much it costs. That all-in cost includes the seasonings and oil, which most of us already have, so if you take that part out, you're looking at $40.06. The total cost to make all three recipes for all the ingredients that you actually use is $28.17. The ingredient cost of the chicken bowls with rice and lentils is about $14.35 or $2.87 per serving. The biggest cost in this recipe is from the chicken. Two pounds of the budget chicken breast at HEB cost $7.88. The ingredient cost for the sweet potato and ham breakfast bake is about $10.13 or $2.03 per serving. The biggest cost from this one, once again, is the meat. The ham cost me $4.99. The ingredient cost for our carrots and hummus, $3.69, or about $0.74 cents per serving. Once again, that brings our total ingredient cost for all three of these recipes to $28.17. Now let's get started. During this prep, I jumped back and forth between the different recipes in order to utilize my time in the kitchen as efficiently as possible. Cooking and preparing everything simultaneously will allow you to save a little bit of time. The first thing I did for this prep was prepare my chicken breasts. Lay out two pounds or 908 grams of boneless skinless chicken breast and sandwich it between two pieces of parchment paper or plastic wrap. Then take a mallet, your fist, or in my case a frying pan and beat the ever living crap out of it until you show it who the boss is. You want these chicken breasts to have equal thickness throughout so they cook more evenly in the oven. That means you have to spank them around for a bit. Once they reach this point, lay them on a baking sheet and drizzle over one tablespoon or 15 grams of oil. Follow that up with a light sprinkling of salt and pepper and about one teaspoon or three grams of garlic powder. Move the breasts around on the tray to coat the bottom side with the oil and then flip them over and repeat the seasoning process on the reverse side. If there's other seasonings you want to add to this chicken, do it. Make it your own. This is how I like mine. You're going to move that tray into the oven at 375 Fahrenheit or 190 Celsius for about 20 minutes. I'll give my work surface a quick little wipe down since I was giving the chicken the business and then it's on to cutting the vegetables. For the chicken and rice recipe, I used one medium sized onion or 200 grams that I cut in thin slices from root to shoot. You can dice this up if you don't like having the longer pieces of onion. Next, for the egg bake, you're going to take one bunch of green onions or about 100 grams worth and cut the green tops into one quarter inch pieces and cut the whites into thin slices. Keep them separated because we're going to use them in different parts of the recipe. Next, wash and peel one large sweet potato or 300 grams. You're going to shred this using a box grater to create smaller pieces. Now I realize if you're a college student watching this, you probably don't have a box grater. I know I didn't have one when I was in college, so if that's you, you'll just have to take a knife to the potato and cut it into really thin pieces. It needs to be small so that after it's baked, you're not left with any uncooked pieces of potato. Alternatively, you could roughly chop the potato and then put it into a blender to process down even farther. I've done that in the past with no issue. One more piece of chopping is our ham steak. You're going to need one pound or 454 grams of a ham steak and cut this into a large dice. Any kind of ham will work here. It doesn't have to be a ham steak. You can use the deli meat or the pre-cube stuff. Those will just probably cost you a bit more. Next, we're going to saute up some of the ingredients for our egg bake to help punch some more flavor into them. Into a skillet over medium-high heat, add one tablespoon or 15 grams of oil, and then dump in your sweet potatoes and scallion whites. Move them around in the oil to distribute, and then give it a light sprinkling of salt and pepper. The ham already has quite a bit of salt in it, so you don't want to add too much here and oversalt your final dish. After a couple of minutes and the onions and sweet potatoes have colored up, pour in the ham and allow it to brown around the edges. You don't have to pan fry these ingredients, you could just pour everything into a casserole dish and bake and it's still going to taste awesome. This saute step is simply here to add more depth of flavor to the final product. We'll set this skillet aside until the oven is clear and ready for our egg bake. Back to the chicken and rice recipe, into a large skillet over medium heat, add 1 tablespoon or 15 grams of oil and dump in all of your onions. We're not going to caramelize these completely but we're going to get them as close as we can without taking too much time. Salting these onions during the early cooking stages is going to help this cook faster because salt Salt encourages the water to come out of the onions. While they're cooking, we'll prepare the rest of our rice ingredients. Into your rice cooker, add a half of a cup or 100 grams of dried lentils, and then one cup or 200 grams of dried rice. Give them a rinse until the water runs clear, and then cover them with water to cook. For the 300 grams we have in here, I filled my rice cooker to slightly above the two cup water line. This was about two and a half cups or 600 grams of water. If you lay your hand on top of the rice and lentils and the water comes up between your second and third knuckle, that's about the right amount. 
Continue cooking those onions and shaking them around until they develop a deep brown color. Another way that you can speed this process up is by drizzling over some water. As the water evaporates and the onions continue to break down, they're going to brown up even further. As I mentioned earlier, we're not going to take these to a full caramelization, that would take too long. But once you've got some nice golden brown coloring and some good fragrance coming from that pan, you can pull it off the heat and pour the onions into your rice and lentils. If you don't have a rice cooker and you cook your rice over the stove, saute your onions in whatever your rice pot is, that way you don't have to dirty an extra skillet. Once my onions were mixed in, I popped on a lid and threw it in the rice cooker to begin cooking. At some point around here, your chicken timer will be screaming at you, so pull the tray from the oven and tempt the chicken to make sure it's cooked. I very rarely use chicken breast when I meal prep because it's lean, unforgiving, and it's easy to overcook. Too many people People are concerned with salmonella poisoning when they cook chicken that they just blast it to 190 degrees and completely incinerate it. I like to shoot for 155 degrees Fahrenheit or 63 degrees Celsius and as long as you hold that temperature for two minutes it's safe to eat. There's a couple other tricks that I'll talk about later when it comes to reheating chicken breast to make it more edible but the key here is to not overcook it the first time through. While the chicken is resting, let's make the egg bake. Turn your oven down to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 177 degrees Celsius and crack 10 eggs into a large bowl. Whisk them together to create a smooth mixture of the whites and the yolks. Then you can add in about a half of a teaspoon or three grams of salt, one teaspoon or three grams of pepper, one teaspoon or three grams of garlic powder, all of the green onion tops that we cut earlier, and then one cup or 112 grams of shredded cheddar cheese. Stir the contents of that bowl together so the seasonings get distributed throughout the eggs. Spray a 13 by nine cast roll dish lightly with some oil and dump in your onion, sweet potato, and ham mixture to the bottom. Spread it out across the surface and then dump in your egg mixture and combine until all the ingredients appear to be evenly distributed. If you choose to skip the saute step from earlier to save some time, it's the same process from here, just dump it all into the casserole dish and bake. This will get put in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 177 Celsius for 40 to 45 minutes. Now for our snack, we've got a very simple basic hummus recipe. Usually when I make this, I toss all the ingredients into a food processor. However, considering I'm making this video with college students in mind, I'm guessing you don't have one, so I'm also going to show you how to do it by hand. Get out a small bowl and one 15.5 ounce can or 439 grams of chickpeas. Drain all of the liquid away, pour them into your bowl, and begin mashing them up with the back of a fork. Doing this by hand is going to take some more elbow grease and the final product is gonna be a bit more rustic than if you used a food processor, but it's still gonna taste great. When you're about 50% of the way mashed, you can add the remaining ingredients. Add one tablespoon or 15 grams of oil, two tablespoons or 30 grams of tahini, two tablespoons or 30 grams of lemon juice, one teaspoon or three grams of garlic powder, one teaspoon or three grams of cumin, and salt to taste. Continue to mash and mix using that liquid to help break down the chickpeas even farther. You won't get a perfectly smooth hummus using this method, but it's an easy way to get a cheap snack. Taste test it and adjust any of the flavors to meet your preferences. If you do happen to have a food processor, all you need to do is dump everything in and turn it on until it's smooth. When I use the food processor, I like to include a bit of the liquid from the canned chickpeas as this will whip up kind of like egg whites do and make a fluffier hummus. You may be able to use a blender to make the hummus, but I've never tested it myself so I can't say for certain. My intuition tells me if you do, you'll have to take off the top and scrape down the sides quite often. To pair with the hummus, I'm going with 2 pounds or 908 grams of carrots. The carrots are just a vehicle to get the hummus into your mouth. The nice thing about carrots are that they're super cheap. You can get 2 pounds of them for less than $2. To make it easier on yourself come snack time, Peel the outer layer of the carrots away using a vegetable peeler, cut off the ends, and then store them in a container covered with water. They'll stay fresh in the fridge this way for a couple of weeks. You can store your hummus the same way in a glass container, or you can divide it out into individual portions, whatever you think will be easiest for you. When you're finished with the hummus, the chicken should be cooled and ready to slice. One of those tips I mentioned earlier when you're meal prepping chicken breast is to cut it into thin slices. I go for about 1 8 of an inch in thickness, and this helps the microwave not have to work so hard. The thinner pieces means that you won't have to cook it for as long, which leads to less overcooking. Next, attend to your rice and lentils. Pull off the lid, fluff it up a bit, stir it around, taste test, and adjust the flavor with salt as needed. Now you're ready to plate. This recipe is gonna make five servings, so lay out five of your meal prep containers and divide the rice evenly into each container. Follow the rice up with each container getting one fifth of the chicken, and depending on how you plan to eat these, you could store it like this. Because I eat at home, this is how I keep mine. I'll construct the actual dish with the lettuce and dressing right before I eat it, but if you need to travel with these, you can just put the lettuce and the dressing inside of the container. For the nutritional estimations, I've included 50 grams of baby spring mix per dish, or 250 grams for the entire recipe. It also includes two tablespoons or 30 grams of the dressing or sauce of your choosing for 150 grams total. I've been using this Italian dressing, but just about anything you want to use will work. This is a blank slate meal. Any kind of flavor profile you want to add will be great. In addition to the Italian dressing, I've tried sriracha mayo and even put some of the hummus in the bowls. Again, if you need to store them with the dressing, just add a ramekin to each dish, cover them up, and then throw them in the fridge and they'll last for up to five days. 
When your 45 minute timer is up, you can pull the egg bake from the oven, set it on the counter, and allow it to cool. You'll know it's finished cooking once it has set in the center. Once again, how you plan to eat this is going to dictate how you store it. If you need to travel with it, cut it up and place it into individual meal prep containers. If you're planning to eat it at home, just leave it in the casserole dish and throw the whole thing in the fridge. This recipe makes five servings, so I cut mine into 10 equal slices, and each serving is two pieces. That leads each serving of this sweet potato and ham egg bake to have about 411 calories and 36 grams of protein. It's incredibly easy to make and will start you off with a nice solid dose of protein first thing in the morning after your sleep. To reheat the chicken bowls, take one out of the fridge and remove the lettuce if you have it stored inside. Here's tip number two for meal prepping chicken breast. When you microwave it, decrease your power level to five and it will help keep the chicken more moist. On my microwave, that involves hitting the power level button five times. Your microwave might be a little bit different. Because I eat these lunches at home and I don't have to travel with them, I add the lettuce right before I eat them. I'll weigh out the lettuce and then rip it up with my hands into smaller pieces so I don't get any big leaves because if I did, I would throw up everywhere. Lettuce is gross, but I eat it because I know it's good for me. I'll add a few splashes of vinegar and maybe some salt before I mix it up, and when the rice and chicken comes out of the microwave, I pour it right on top so that it helps to wilt the lettuce down a bit. Finally, I add the two tablespoons or 30 grams of Italian dressing, mix it together one more time to combine, and this is now ready to eat. Each serving of these chicken bowls with rice and lentils has about 565 calories and 48 grams of protein. They will last for up to five days in the fridge, and remember when baking the chicken to not overcook it. It is worth the investment to spend a few bucks on a meat thermometer if you don't have one. If you switch up the dressing or sauce that goes on top, it will slightly change the nutritional estimations, so just make sure you put it into an app and recalculate if needed. For the carrots and hummus, if you split it into five servings, it will be about two to three carrots depending on the size of the carrots and roughly 80 grams of the hummus. That will give you a nutritional estimation of about 249 calories and eight grams of protein. You could pair the hummus with pita or crackers if you wish, but I chose carrots for this video simply because of how economical they are. It's also a fairly easy way to get some raw vegetables in your diet and having a combination of raw and cooked vegetables seems to be a good thing. And that's how you do five breakfasts, five lunches, and five snacks for $28.17. I think that's pretty good for 2023. Last weekend, I went out for dinner for the first time in ages. I got three dumplings and an entree that weren't even good. The waiter brings me my bill. It was $52. I said, ha 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 ha, very funny, Garcon. Bring me the real bill or I'm going to terrorize every square inch of this establishment. Then I said, for legal reasons, it's a joke. It's not a real terroristic threat. You can't call the police. And he said, no, that is the real bill. And I told him, you're never going to see my face in here again, you grifting clown. $52 is quite a ways away from the $2.50 I spent per meal on the ones that I made. And guess what? Mine were way better. You could almost make this prep twice and have 20 meals for the cost that I paid for one. The written versions of these recipes with the ingredients and instructions listed are published on my website and that is linked in the description below. If you liked this video, check out this other budget-friendly meal prep video on the screen now. It's a bit over a year old now, so you might not be able to get the same prices, but the concepts remain the same.